Okay, so let's get started creating our color picker. So we have a table element right here with an ID of color picker. Now in the CSS, we have a style and a position for the table and the TD tags within the color picker. But in the browser, we can't see anything because we don't have any content in the table yet. We are going to create that content with this array called colors. This is an array of hexadecimal numbers. Remember that when we put a pound sign in front of a hexadecimal number, we create a CSS color. For example, let's go to the HTML and inside the color picker table, let's create a table row. And inside that table row, let's create a table cell. And then inside the table cell, let's create a style tag with a background color equal to one of our hexadecimal numbers in the array. So let's go to the array and copy any one of these and then go back to the HTML and paste it right in front of the pound sign. Okay, so let's save that and take a look. Now we have one table cell, but what we really want to do is create a table cell for each one of our hexadecimal numbers in the array. So let's take this out, let's comment this line of code out and go to the JavaScript. And now underneath the array, let's declare some variables. Let's declare i, that just sets it into memory. Let's declare lane equals the colors array, the length of it. So it's dot length. Okay, now let's declare color picker. Call it color picker and set that equal to the element or table element with an ID of color picker. Okay, so now let's go down and create a for loop. Say for i equals zero to i is less than the length, len, we're going to loop through the full array, we're going to increment up i++. plus plus. This is a typical for loop. Now remember that arrays are zero indexed. So the first i or the first text number is zero and the last text number is the length lane minus one. So when we increment up, we do what we are going to do for each hex number in the array. And what we are going to do goes inside of the curly braces. So let's start by declaring a variable called color and set it equal to colors inside brackets i. And then let's add or concatenate a pound sign to the beginning of the hex number. What we are doing here is concatenating or adding a string to a variable. We are going to do this a lot in this course, so please pay close attention to what we are doing here. There's a lot we can learn if we console.log. So let's console.log color. Okay, let's save it and see what we get. So let's inspect and in the console, we get all these hexadecimal numbers. And with the pound sign attached to them, they can become CSS colors. So let's go back to the code. Now let's take this console.log out and let's declare, let's say color picker. We're going to take this variable we called color picker and add to it with a plus equal sign. We're going to add a string. So what we need is double quotes because I'm going to put single quotes within this string. We need an opening tr tag, an opening td tag, and a closing td tag, and a closing tr tag. Now inside the td tag, let's give it a style. Set that style equal to the background. See, this is where we need the single quotes. 
we're going to set the background and then we're going to we need to concatenate okay we need to break this string up with our double quotes so two double quotes and inside the double quotes we need two plus signs what we're going to do again we're going to concatenate our variable to this string so the variable let's get this variable color paste it right inside the two plus signs so just like what we did here we are concatenating the string to the variable color and then again we are concatenating the variable to the string and all this put together is equal to the color picker variable so what we need to do now is select the element with an ID of color picker this is our table and then we need to set its HTML to the variable color picker so let's save this and refresh and you see what we have is a table with one column but it, it has a row with our colors for each of our hexadecimal numbers now let's inspect this in the inspect element okay so we have a tr tag and a td tag for each of our hexadecimal numbers and each of these td tags has a background color of the hexadecimal number that's because we attach the pound sign to the hexadecimal number so let's go back to the code so for now i want to emphasize something the point i want to make is that whenever we concatenate a string to a variable we have to pay close attention to what we're doing. For example, suppose I put a space right here inside the quotation marks. So let's save and check it out. When we refresh, it breaks. So let's inspect the element again. Okay, you see this is not going to work because we have that space between the pound sign and the hexadecimal number. But the pound sign in the hexadecimal number, it's what makes the color. So we need to go back to the code and get rid of that space. Now we can add space outside of the quotation marks. It doesn't really matter. So let's make some space right here and then save it again and see if it works. And it works. So let's go and check the element. So we see how our background has the pound sign plus the hexadecimal number okay so let's go back to the code i want to show you something else what would happen if we forgot a plus sign when we concatenated the variable to the string so let's remove this plus sign and check it out and when we refresh the page we see that something went wrong so let's inspect the console to try to figure it out Syntax error, unexpected string. What's that mean? Something right around here. We have this color and then we have this string. You see what happened when we left the plus sign out? It threw the whole thing off. So we have to be very careful and pay a lot of attention when we concatenate variables to strings. So let's go back to the code and then let's put our plus sign back inside of our string to concatenate our variable to the string. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if that's working again. And it's working again. But we still have a problem. Our problem is that we only have one column. All of our rows are in one column. And we want a to make a color palette like this. This has 16 columns. Okay, so we got to go back to the code and figure something out. What we need to do is create an opening TR tag and an opening and closing TD tag whenever we want to begin a row. But we don't want a closing TR tag right now because we're going to add more TD tags or cells to the row. So if we wanted to create a 16 column table, we would want to have an opening TR tag at the first index at the 16th index and at the 32nd index and so on. 
Okay, but remember that first index in an array is zero. So we want when i is zero or i is 16 or i is 32, we want an opening tr tag. Now we also need to end the row when i is 15 or i is 31 or so on. We want a closing tr tag to end the row. But notice that i being 15 and i being 31, if we add the number 1 to 15 and 31, we get 16 and 32. So these are all divisible by 16. 0, 16, 32. So we're going to use this logic to create our color table. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to use modular division and conditional logic to finish creating our color picker, but we're going to make it 16 columns in our table. So in the next video, we're going to use modular division and conditional logic to finish creating our color picker. And it's going to be fun. Believe me, you'll really like it. But you've got to be able to think with conditional logic. That means if, then, else. If, then, else. We're going to be doing a lot of that in this course. So I'm hoping you're enjoying this course. And I'll see you in the next video.